السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين <تصفيق> The topic today is I am, I am near uh, إن شاء الله we will uh, contemplate together on a Quranic verse from the Quran uh, So let's start with the prayers we do yet usually uh, oh God, show us things as they are. Oh God, deliver us from the darkness of illusions and bring us to the light of understanding. Uh, these prayers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are uh, our prayers in these workshops. We pray to see reality as it is, because reality is wonderful. It's full of mercy, and sometimes our illusions get in the way. <clears throat> so uh, today, the verse that I would like to study uh, these verses that I put here, one, two, three, four, five, five verses uh, in, in chapter Bakara. Uh, the first three uh, speaks about fasting, and then the last one speaks about fasting, uh, and uh, Ramadan in particular. Uh, however, there is one verse in between, in between these verses that speaks about Ramadan, which seems to be not related. So today we want to talk about that specific verse, which is 2, uh, 186. Uh, in close translation, and if my servants ask you about me, I am near. I respond to the call of the one who calls whenever he calls me. Let them then respond unto me and believe in me, so that they may follow the right way. Inshallah, we want to study this verse from the beginning to the end, and also relate it to see whether, in fact, it is unrelated to Ramadan or it's actually very related to Ramadan. Uh, by the way, Ramadan Mubarak to all of you uh, in this uh, uh, first workshop in, in, in Ramadan that we are doing. Uh, no, uh, so we will not study these ones, but I just wanted to make a point that these ones before and after are related to Ramadan and fasting. But we are studying this one here, which is 2, uh, 186. Uh, so the other ones, inshallah, maybe the next weeks, or maybe you can study, uh, do uh, self-study. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, get started. And if my servants ask you about me, I am near. Actually, there are several verses in the Quran, more than 10, which start very similarly, and if they ask. And in each one of these, the response is, say, and then it continues. Only this verse, which has the same structure in the beginning, doesn't say, say. It's almost like there is no intermediary. The emphasis is direct. There is no one to say, say to them that I am near. No. If you want to know, you, then it's immediate. So the question is, is he near? This is an important question to ask. Uh, how can we know his nearness? Uh, according to one uh, narration, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to him one day and asked, to him, asked him, shall we call to God afar, from far, or talk to him in secret? In Arabic, anunadih am nunaji. So they asked him, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the companions, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, stays silent, and then, according to a narration, this verse was revealed. So, uh, generally, we have this understanding as if it's very, God is very far. Uh, so, we want to talk about the nearness of God today. 
everything needs a creator, needs a source. So whatever I touch, I smell, I hear, all of it, it requires a source. It can't exist by itself. So if we think of it from this perspective, then the source is on the other side of whatever we touch. We can say it is, it is there. If I see uh, a TV screen with a broadcast, the, the broadcasting is just there. The TV needs the broadcasting to happen for me to watch the broadcast. The same thing, if I see a thing, it means it is being created, it is being fashioned, it is being beautified, it cannot happen by itself. It means its creator is just there, beautifying it, creating it, fashioning it, sustaining it, creating it, uh, giving it life. So, instead of taking this moment for granted as if things exist by themselves, maybe we need to rethink about this moment. And instead of just taking it for granted, recognize that this moment is given at the moment, this moment, is being created. I am on the other hand, side of receiving the moment. So I can receive the moment, be in the understanding of receiving it. This, this immediately brings to my heart and mind that I am receiving, I am being given. It's not just there because it can't just be there. Nothing meaningful that has beauty in it can just happen by itself. A beautiful piece of art requires an artist the same way a beautiful creation the life that we see around us requires a living being, uh, the source of life, to give this life to the, this living beings that we see this moment. Because this moment I see life. It means this moment the life giver, Al-Hayy, is present giving this life. On the other side, just, you know, there are no sides in fact. We can't, language is just not able to convey but there, because without its source, how can there be life? Another example, without electricity, how can there be light? So when I see light, by definition, electricity is there. But where is it? Can I touch it? Or electricity is making itself known through light. It's one aspect of it, a quality of the electricity. Another quality of the electricity is an example. All examples have issues, but I'm using an example. Uh, another uh, uh, ex uh, thing of electricity, it can give heat, right? So the same thing, when I see a beautiful thing, who is the source of it? Where is it coming from? If I say, oh, this can't happen by itself, because nothing meaningful, I've never seen anything that has purpose and meaning happening by itself. It means it's being fashioned and made. It can't make itself. I can't make myself. I am seeing myself growing. I eat and this body is growing and my mind thinks. Very interesting, actually, when we think about it. So, when we concentrate just on the moment and recognize that everything right now is being given, right now, it is fresh from the oven and there is no other option nothing else makes sense if you tell me this is just happening by itself I say well how what is making it are the atoms in the last moment making the atoms this moment how can they make them do they have the ability to know what will happen in the next moment or are they just being utilized in this show in this uh, exhibition, if you will, that is in front of us, that is full of uh, purpose and art. It shows us, tells us about many qualities of God. He is the, you see something not just, say, I feel this needs to be just. Wow, this picture made you be aware of the justice of God. You see a beautiful thing, it's a beauty. This made you aware of the beauty. 
Where, who is the source of all these qualities? So, when I recognize that everything I touch or smell or, or be in or requires a giver, requires the one that is actually communicating to me through all this, this becomes like a, just a very thin, although it's a universe we say, very big, vast universe. But this very big, vast universe is just being created right now. Every moment, moment by moment, is being sustained and fashioned and given uh, all these uh, attributes that we see. Who is communicating to me through this? So, whoever he is, I don't have to call names, right? Sometimes say, because sometimes we have, or we need to rethink of the meanings we put in the word God. Sometimes we limit. Although we are talking about the one that the space and time is being created by, right? So he is creating the time and space, limitless. Because this time and space has to have a creator to exist, to be here. There is no here without his creating, without his sustaining. So when we receive every moment, we recognize the one who is giving this moment is actually very close. Right now, he is giving the rain, the friends, the community, the life. Because all these require a source. And the question then, we say, how near is God? How near is this one that we are talking about? If we say a little near or too near, or if we put any time, any space, it means we are limiting the limitless. So can there be time and space? You say no, because time and space are limited things. Time is very limited. Space is very limited. So if we think of the nearness of God in terms of time and space, it means we are in our mind and heart limiting our creator. The one that is beyond time and space. How, but imminent, because each thing in the time and space requires his direct doing, his direct action. So, transcendent and imminent at the same time. <clears throat> imminent because whatever I touch and hear is showing me quality from him, although it is limited, but it is showing a, 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 a glimpse from his limitless attributes. So then the question, how near? And the answer is, I am near. So this nearness depends on our recognition of the nearness of God within ourselves. Sometimes so near that we forget of ourselves. Maybe during a time when we are contemplating. We forget about ourselves and about creation and we are just contemplating on God and God's attributes. So maybe that moment it was very near. This nearness we don't know. But sometimes because of our mind and heart is so preoccupied we don't feel the nearness so maybe then as near as how, how much near you want it to be if depending on your level of understanding and awareness of god but he is inviting he's saying i am near surely actually in arabic in me surely for sure truly i am near wherever you look whenever you you will find that it will connect you to the source, near, very close, uh, closer to you than yourself, another, 
closer to you than your regular vein. A verse in the Quran says, so closer to me than my life, because the regular vein is where we say is our this physical body, very critical for it. Because this life is given by him. So God knows me before I know myself. And the question is, who is the one who is near? Oh, brother or sister, I am so sinful. I am so far. Is the verse saying that? It says, my servants. It doesn't say, oh, the righteous one, I am near to you only. It says, my servants. It doesn't specify whether the servant is doing there five times a day or not. Maybe they are somewhere in life, but suddenly they recognize their dependence and their nearness to God. Yes, they recognize their servanthood. The moment I recognize my servanthood, I recognize God's nearness to me. And isn't that what matters? Sometimes I do all the prayers, but then I say, oh, I am so great. You say, do you feel your dependence on God, your utter nothingness if God is not supporting you with his sustenance and guidance? I thought I was doing it by myself. Oh, then maybe you are not recognizing the nearness. Because recognizing the nearness of God requires us to recognize that whatever we have is coming from God. The light, electricity is coming from the lights. The, the light's light or the lamp's light is coming from electricity. If the lamp for one, one moment thinks, oh, this is my doing, then the lamp is just forgetting that all its light is coming from the electricity. It's not thinking now. It's not recognizing every moment that it's receiving its light from this electricity. Of course, all, as, as I said, all examples have issues, but God is using examples to teach us. So, whenever I recognize my dependence to the source of everything, whenever I say, God, whatever I am, it's all from you. I just recognize that right now. Wow, this is a, an important moment. This is an important moment in our lives. And that is the doorway. The doorway is to recognize that when I recognize who I am dependent to, I recognize who it is that supports me. That's why the word, the word habit is a very important word, the word servant if you will, because it ties you immediately to your creator. It says, what do you have? Well, I have many possessions. Are they really yours or are they given by you, to you? What do you have? I have my life. Is it really yours? Or is it right now given? And I am just discovering that I have it and saying, oh, wow, this is amazing. I can think too. I can talk. Wow, this is great. <sighs> Who is giving this? Or, no, no, I don't worry about that. Since it's given, I'll pretend it's mine. So, this, instead of pretending, we are here invited to the doorway. Do you want to know your nearness to your creator? Know your servanthood. Recognize your dependence. Everything in you is connected to him. It has to have him. Without God, I cannot exist because my existence requires the one who gives existence. My Seeing requires the one who is the source of seeing. 
He is creating the eyes, but creating also what the eyes see. So before I see, he already created what I have, what I see, and what I see with. Uh, what else can this do without one giving it? Because it's so magnificent, it can't happen by itself, this eye. So it means that when I just recognize, wow, this seeing right now I am seeing, we are seeing. He is giving it. How close then? Closer to my closer than closer than my seeing to myself. So how can I communicate with him? And when can I communicate with him? I respond to the call of the one who calls whenever he calls me. This is so interesting actually, right? I respond to the call of the one who calls when, whenever he calls me. Why? How? What do you think? Let's just talk. Any ideas? So we say whenever I call, whenever I recognize my Creator is whenever I recognize that He is actually communicating to me. We say, yes, I am asking for car. It, he didn't give it to me. He didn't hear me. But here, we're talking a little bit inside. Who says he didn't hear you? And how can you know if he hears you? So, whenever I recognize him, it means I recognize the active one here. I recognize the one who is right now creating this place. Whenever I am calling, I recognize who is giving me the ability to call, to talk, to talk to him also. I am, this recognition makes this connection, communication, establishes the communication. Because, in fact, his side of the line has been always and is always open. He's always communicating. Always communicating through everything. We think the speech of God is just the, the, the Qur'an. But the Qur'an teaches us the speech of God is the eternal speech that is in action and in speech. Both the Qur'an and the book of creation are the speech of God. Because there is no other explanation to it. When I see that this thing cannot happen by itself, it has to happen by someone who is able to make it. Why is he? He's communicating with it. It's his language to me. In one language. That I can decipher its code through my heart, through the teaching of the prophets. They teach us how to interpret the creation. He said, do you see the stars, how they glorify God? See, now the prophet is teaching me that the stars actually glorify God. He is teaching me how God is communicating, how he is showing his glory through the stars and, the, and the, uh, everything else in creation. So it is me that was so occupied that I stopped hearing I stopped hearing that God actually was communicating to me every moment. So, when I call, it means I stopped and I said, no, no, wait a minute. This is not happening by itself. God is here. So, God says, 
whenever you recognize that is whenever actually I am responding to you. you we made the connection why don't you recognize that that is more precious than the car you want because he might give you a car or he might not depending on what you really need at the very moment but at least you recognize who can give the car tomorrow or today it means or who cannot or who, who is creating everything so this being so preoccupied with life and losing ourselves somewhere this is our problem And here, God says, do you want to recognize my nearness? Whenever you recognize it, I am there for you. So this preoccupation that we have, what can take it away? Now we are in the month of Ramadan. A wonderful reminder of taking away the preoccupations. Because although we we are stopping just eating and a and couple other things but we feel our just through the hunger and the thirst we start to feel wow they are all given to me I was just playing with them I was thinking the food was just entertainment although this food was gift from God to teach me about the sustainer the one who gives all these beautiful things he says Take the good of it and thank me in another verse. But we forgot who is giving it. So now when we stop and for a sudden we, say, oh, we remember, okay, I was so preoccupied with other things, I forgot who was giving everything to me. So it, here you go, the connection. This nearness, we can really strengthen. Strengthen in the sense of strengthen our awareness of God's nearness to us. Because God's nearness is always there. It is my awareness that's not always there. So I need to strengthen my awareness of the nearness of God. And what a wonderful time to do it in Ramadan. What a wonderful setup that God has set up actually by taking me away from a couple things he reminds me of my dependence on him of my need to him of how actually i've been taking everything for granted and i have lost myself somewhere but now it's time to recollect time to recollect <clears throat> When I call on to God, and that doesn't have to, as we said, right? Should we call upon Him from far? Or just talk in secret? Within me, it's just a recognition it can be. In another narration, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw a companion shouting and asking from God. He said, you know, you don't have to shout to, for God to hear you. And there are so many other examples of that. So when we recognize this reality, that the one behind everything is right here, and when I am praying, it means God I am aware of your closeness and my utter dependence on you. Have you noticed how many of the prayers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, start with definitions of God? Oh God, the most merciful. You are the giver. You are the life giver. You are the self-subsistent one. You are and you are and you are reminding us of who God's nearness and then reminding myself of God's, of my dependence on Him. I am in need. All whatever, when am I in need? Every moment I am in need. I am in need of your guidance. Oh, I am guided. 
Are you? Maybe last moment. How about this moment? If God, the head, he got the guide, does not continue to guide, how can I be guided? How can I be so sure of myself? And we see the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, himself is not sure of himself. He says, do not leave me a moment with myself. How can I need you? Because I recognize that it's all coming from you. You are the source of it all. So then when I pray, don't brag about it, but thank God that enabled you to do it. Thank God who enabled you to fast today. And if not, say, God, help me. Because without you, I am lost. See, so it's there. It's the connection is there. It's, it's light without electricity does not work. A human being without God. If we think we work, then it means we are not aware of our servanthood. Then here it does not, when we look at this verse, it says, and if my servants, see it's so special also, my servants, not this, this servants, my servants, special relationship, because I am being specially created and fashioned right now. This very hand of mine is very unique. It is specially created by God. Now for me to use, how special is that? God did not create me in a factory and I am just one with a serial number. There are no serial numbers because there are no two that are the same. It is all perfect, it is all uh, original, original. He is a mubdeh. Everything is new and created in the best fashion, every moment. How can I say that I am not special? I am special because of God, not because of me. Then you become thankful. Say, God, thank you. Well, I am not to boast, not to be thankful. Because I am without you, what would I be? Where would I be? From nothingness you have chosen to create me. And now I am aware. And this awareness is just a gift of you, from you. From your spirit, you have breathed onto me so that I can become aware. And can become aware of some, of, some, of a very important reality. You created me to know you. To know the infinite I have been created. This whole creation teaches me about the infinite attributes of the creator. How special is that? <clears throat> so fasting then helps us to purify these lenses. Because sometimes say, okay, I am near, I am near. And you know, we do all these philosophical discussions. We can talk about this. But I am, if I am really hungry and feel my dependence on God, there is no philosophy involved. It is the reality. I know I am dependent on. I know that, wow, I didn't realize how much I needed this water. I know it. We can talk about it for hours when in a coffee shop. It's a philosophy becomes. But fasting makes it real. Real. Reminds me, don't take this bread for granted. And not just the bread and the, and the water and all the food we eat. These become examples to recognize other things, and the eyes, and the mind, and the life, and the spirit. Wow. What an interesting purification. So there is activity going on. That's the wonderfulness of the teachings of the prophets. God knows us. That's why we say, why do we have to do some activity? We know God is there. Well, because God is the creator of me. He knows that fasting will help me to recognize this treasure. So fasting becomes a doorway to this treasure. <clears throat> fasting helps us to be away a little bit from all these distractions. 
By the way, when I say distractions, food is not a distraction by itself. Food is a gift from God. But <coughs> my dependence on food or on other things makes me forget about the real one who makes all these and gives them to me. So the, dis the distraction is my approach to the created things, not the created things by themselves. The created things by themselves are wonderful. They are created by God. But when we approach them as I need it, this is, this is mine, possession now. Now that's what we need to get away from. And fasting helps us to do that. It's an invitation to recognize our dependence on our sustainer. It's not easy, right? Maybe we don't hope to be sick. Inshallah, may Allah give us health all the time. But sickness is also another thing and difficult things that remind us of our dependence, of the things that we were taking for granted. When we see, oh, how much I need a healer. God, you are the healer. I recognize without your healing, uh, 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 reflecting on me, I am nothing. I need you. See, it's a moment to re remind, re remember that. So, by being away from certain gifts, as I said, we remember that they are given. They are not there haphazardly. Everything is given. Am I there to receive? Am I receiving life, or am I taking it and not? Even giving it? Am I s pretending as if life is just happening and I own it? Even myself is not mine. I am owned by God. I don't own myself. I mean, not in we. Do we own ourselves? Like we are. How can we own something we don't know how even it we just discovered it to be here. Oh. <clears throat> so reflection helps us uh, reflecting on ourselves. They ponder on, think about the, how, the, how everything is created, the heavens and earth and everything within it. So our lenses now start to see God's ever-giving attributes, his compassion and love. I was nothing, and he has given me life to experience. He has given me an ability to know the eternal through his eternal speech that is in the horizons and in the books that he has revealed. And thankfulness, then, increases according to knowing his nearness. We thank someone who gives. So we want to be thankful to God. Recognize that he is giving this moment to you. He is near and he gives right now. I am receiving this air, this life, this ability to talk, seeing, smelling. They cannot just be here by themselves. And they were not given yesterday, and we are not now here by ourselves. They are given right now, because there is only now. What is there? The past has gone. How can past continue? Future, I don't know. But now has to have a source. It is God. Right now, he is giving it to me. So when we feel his nearness 
and talk to him in secret. It's time actually to thank him. You know, I remembered uh, a story that was narrated, I think, in uh, one of Imam Ghazali's books, that he mentions that it is uh, to Moses, uh, Moses, peace be upon him. I don't know uh, the historical background of the story, but it has lots of merit. So, uh, uh, Moses, peace be upon him, go to God and he says, that when a person prays to you, what do you say? He says, I say, I say, I am here and I am listening to you. He says, when he bows to you, what do you say? He says, I am here and listening to you. He says, when he prostrates, he says, yes. And he continues like this at the end. He says, when he sins and he recognizes and he goes back to you and prays, he says, I say, I am here and listening, here and listening. A person who recognizes he is in the wrong path and goes back to God, he recognizes there is a forgiver. He recognizes there is God. So why do we, we don't need to put levels and say, oh, these are perfect people, we are here, we are there. No, we are all the poor that need God. Who is there to claim a place? Says, now I am there. <coughs> it means he is not because he, because claiming now, recognizing your utter dependence and your utter sinful nature. If God is not helping me to be guided, it means recognizing my dependence in everything he is the way to God. It's not to get away and says now you know I don't need. I'm able to do it by myself means the self that you imagine it is stealing things from God you are stealing God's guidance and saying it's my guidance I did it by myself wasn't that what Karun says he says I, 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 it all came to me from my knowledge it's my knowledge But another one who was given, like Prophet uh, Solomon, peace be upon him, or Prophet uh, da David, Dawood, peace be upon him, they said, God, thank you for whatever gifts you are giving us. That's the difference. So things by themselves are not distractions. How we relate to them is the distraction. And here, when we recognize God's nearness, it means God I am your servant and who do I have other than you to go to? Every other is your gift. It is your creation. The others that I thought in my in my mind and heart that would give me happiness and satisfaction were just my illusions of some gods that I thought were the source of my happiness and my satisfaction. In fact, it, it's all yours. You are always the source of everything. When I err, it is you who forgive. When I do good, it is you to thank for enabling me to do it. So to be near to God is to recognize his nearness to us. Not to try to climb somewhere and imagine we will go somewhere. No, we will recognize how near he is to us. How needy we are to him. In everything. Uh, so let them then respond unto me and believe in me so that they may follow the right way. Let them respond to this. The communication is clear, is, is everywhere. When they recognize this, they will follow the right way that I have fashioned for my servants. Any comments? I, I know uh, maybe it's Ramadan, nobody wants to make comments, but 
you're tired, inshallah. Any comments, anything in your mind, heart? And another uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which I wanted to put here but I forgot, it's a hadith Qudsi where God says, uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, says that God says, uh, whoever, whoever is so preoccupied on remembering me that he would not be able to call on to me with many, many things because of his remembering me. I will give him whatever every person is calling about. So, in other words, this remembering, this coming close to God, is in and by itself calling on to God. In a way, you start to walk with God, not thinking God is far, God is with me, near me, someone I can talk to all the time. And he, I know he listens because I can confirm that everything is coming from him. He is just on the other, he just, it's a very thin screen that is here. Uh, SubhanAllah. Yes, we have a, a couple minutes. I, uh, any comments, any uh, questions? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, so much. Inshallah, we'll uh, end uh, the lecture here. Anybody would like to do a prayer today? Uh, any volunteer? So then I'll make one since I don't want to put anybody on spot. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim wa akhiru da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen O God, glory be unto you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. You are the all-knowing, all-wise. Amen.